Good morning and welcome to the second of three videos on the lymphatic system, which deals with chapter seven in your textbooks. So <clears throat> um, today we're going to talk about the uh, lymphatic system itself and um, begin a brief discussion of immunity. Now, uh, many people think that the lymphatic system deals only with immunity, but this slide shows that th there's actually a lot more to it than that. Um, there are four major functions of the lymphatic system. All right? First, the lymphatic uh, capillaries absorb excess tissue fluid and return it to the bloodstream. All right? Interestingly enough, um, fluid inside the cytoplasm of the cells and what we call the interstitial fluid that surrounds your cells um, can sometimes, well, it accumulates all right, over time. And uh, unless it's uh, taken care of, it will continue to build up. And that can lead to a feeling of bloatedness and certainly weight gain. All right? You've, you may have heard the phrase that somebody uh, is retaining water. Well, that's what they're talking about here. And it's up to the lymphatic system to get that water um, out of the system. And so what they do, these capillaries do is they absorb it and uh, send it back to the bloodstream where it becomes plasma. So the cellular fluid, the interstitial fluid, lymph, which is the fluid in the lymphatic capillaries, and blood plasma are all essentially the same fluid. Now, uh, the lymphatic capillaries um, also play a role in absorbing um, fats and the components of fats from the small intestines. There are specialized, these are specialized lymphatic capillaries called lacteals. Now, um, amino acids and glucose are typically absorbed directly into the bloodstream and then sent to um, the liver and then eventually to uh, the rest of the bloodstream. Um, but fats and, and um, the components of fats are absorbed by the lymphatic capillaries and sent to the liver. Um, now, in terms of the immune functions of the lymphatic system, um, lymph and the, and the aspects of the lymphatic system work in the production and the maintenance and the distribution of lymphocytes. Now, lymphocytes are a specialized type of white blood cell, and we're going to talk about them in a great, uh, great detail in just a few minutes. Um, but their major function is to help in the defense of your body against pathogens, right? You don't want uh, these things running rampant through your body, and it's your uh, lymph nodes and the lymphocytes that actually help to fight off these infections. Now, there are four organs that are uh, associated with the lymphatic system, okay? The first, believe it or not, is red bone marrow, mm -hmm. right? And why, uh, it, why is this? Well, because uh, red bone marrow is the site of blood cell production, all right? These, um, this is where the um, red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets are produced. But most important for the lymphatic system, this is the site of white blood cell uh, production. All right. And actually, some white blood cells actually stay there and mature there. Now, um, as an interesting uh, side effect, um, children tend to have uh, more bone marrow, uh, red marrow, than, uh, than adults. And uh, the, so the amount of blood, red bone marrow that you have actually decreases as you age. Um, children tend to have bone, uh, red bone marrow in most of their bones. Um, but adults generally only have it in their large bones, including the sternum, the ribs, um, the humerus, which is the uh, upper arm bone, and the femur, which is the upper uh, leg bone, and also in some parts of the pelvis. Why does it decrease? Well, because children have the least developed immune system, and so it makes sense um, for uh, them to have more bone marrow than adults do. The second uh, organ is the thymus gland. And this is a big gland that sits directly above your heart. Okay. It is largest in children and it, it shrinks as we age. Now it doesn't really shrink because every organ grows to some degree, but it doesn't grow at the same rate as the rest of the body. And so in an adult, it is relatively smaller than it would be in a child. Um, 
immature T lymphocytes, and there are two major kinds of lymphocytes, but immature T lymphocytes move from the bone marrow to the thymus, all right? T for thymus, um, and that's where they mature, and 95% of them will actually just stay in the thymus um, for life. Now, the- It's uh, eight o'clock. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the system itself is composed of a bunch of capillaries that come together in uh, small bean-shaped structures called lymph nodes. Um, these are um, found all along the lymphatic capillaries and they are filled with B cells, T cells, and other cells which we call macrophages. And these are the, the eaters of pathogens. Um, they are uh, all over the body, but they tend to be concentrated in the neck, the armpit, and the groin. This is one of the reasons why when a doctor is uh, checking you out, he'll feel your, the, for the lymph nodes just under your uh, chin, um, because if they're swollen, that indicates an infection. Uh, last but not least, you have the spleen. Um, which is found in the upper left-hand uh, region of your abdominal cavity, uh, just under the ribs. And it is filled with a substance called white pulp, uh, which is filled with lymphocytes. Um, and then there's another aspect of the spleen that's involved in filtering the blood. But it's really the white pulp that we're interested in, uh, in today. Okay. So this is a diagram of what the lymphatic system actually looks like. The green squiggly lines that run all through the diagram represent the lymphatic capillaries. Um, you can see uh, here is the thymus gland. Here is the spleen. Uh, whoopsie daisy. Uh, red bone marrow is indicated. Uh, uh, we actually in. Come on now. Uh, red bone marrow is actually located in the tips of the long bones, and there's white bone marrow, uh, or actually yellow bone marrow, in the uh, middle section. Now, you can see every so often there's a, a little node on, come on now, please, please, please. Um, and you can see lymph nodes here and here. Um, here and so on. But you can also see that they're highly concentrated in the neck, the armpits, and the groin. Um, these, the capillary system itself leads into or leads to ducts, and the ducts attach directly to uh, various major um, arteries or actually veins. Um, so the right lymphatic duct, which is found in the, in the neck, uh, dumps into the right subclavian vein, uh, subclavian just under the clavicle, all right, the, the collarbone, um, the thoracic duct, um, and so on. And so this is where the, the lymph enters the blood plasma. Over here on the right-hand side of the picture, you can see uh, a diagram of how just how intertwined the lymphatic capillaries are, and that's the green ones, with the blood capillaries. All right, there, so wherever there's a blood capillary, there's very likely to be a lymphatic capillary as well. And all of the body's tissue cells are uh, associated with capillary beds, both blood and lymph. Okay, now, the lymphatic vessels are actually uh, one-way systems, all right, just like arteries are one-way and veins are one-way, um, and they're designed to carry a fluid called lymph. Now, um, the system itself is composed of capillaries, larger vessels, and ducts, which lead into the bloodstream, and their job is to return tissue fluid, all right, which is, includes water, uh, and stuff that's dissolved in water back to the bloodstream. All right. Interestingly enough, the larger vessels are similar in structure to veins and they even have valves. The major difference between the lymphatic vessels and the blood vessels is that the lymphatic vessels actually begin as capillaries. It's, it's not a, a, a round trip system, but rather a one way system from the tissues into uh, eventually into the bloodstream. All right, whereas the blood is kind of a, a, a round and round and round uh, system where the blood is continuously recycled, lymph is just taken from the tissues and put into the blood. Okay, 
Now, there are uh, two major types of lymphocytes that uh, I want you to be aware of. Um, and I'm going to uh, just write them, oh, God's sakes, uh, up here or not. Um, we're going to put the B cells. And uh, these guys are uh, mostly uh, developing and maturing in the bone marrow. And then there are the T cells. And these guys uh, are designed to, uh, or well, actually mature in the thymus. So that's where the B and the T come from, all right? B cells uh, are developing, maturing in the bone marrow. T cells are developing and maturing in the, uh, in the thymus. Okay, so now let's talk about the defense of your body, okay? The defense of your body has essentially uh, three lines of defense, okay? Just like a good army or, or that sort of thing. The first line of defense is going to be the physical barriers, all right? Think about a castle in medieval times, all right? The castle is going to be besieged by an invading army, all right? What's the first barrier that the, that the uh, invading army is going to encounter? Well, those are the uh, physical barriers, all right? These include things like the skin, um, as, uh, which would represent the castle walls. Uh, in addition, there'd be uh, the fluid physical barriers like tears and saliva and urine, which literally physically flush the microbes out of the body. When, when you cry, um, you know, they, they will, uh, it washes those things out. For example, think about allergy season, right? People get watery eyes, itchy eyes, right? All that fluid is trying to wash the, um, the pollen or whatever you're allergic to out of your system. Saliva does the same thing, except that, of course, saliva also has digestive enzymes. And urine, uh, you know, the st a stream of urine can wash microbes right out of your urinary system. There are also mucous membranes that line your uh, trachea and lungs, your digestive tract, your reproductive tract, and your urinary tract. And so there's mucus in there that catches these pathogens, viruses and bacteria and, and pollen, whatever it is, uh, and keeps them from getting into the body. And in addition, you have resident bacteria, uh, normal bacteria that live inside your body. Um, and they're uh, occupying the space that these invaders would want to take up. And so, um, you know, think about it this way. If, you know, if you look out the window, you can see the houses on, on the cul-de-sac that I live in. And, you know, there are six houses in this cul-de-sac. Well, if a seventh family wants to live here, they can because there's not a seventh house. All right. Well, invading bacteria, if they can't find a, a spot to live, they they won't be able to stay. Um, there are also chemical barriers that are included in the first line of defense. And these uh, include secretions of the oil glands, um, sweat, tears, saliva, um, and uh, also the acidic pH in your stomach. Uh, as well as the vagina in females, uh, will kill any invading microbes. Um, for example, your food is, is covered with bacteria. Even if it's steaming hot, it, it, as soon as it comes out of the oven, it begins to accumulate bacteria. And so you're eating these things all the time. But the, high, the, uh, the low pH in your stomach will digest them and kill them before they get into the rest of your body. Um, the uh, environment of the vagina is also very acidic, which prevents uh, many um, infections of uh, the female reproductive tract. Now, the second line of defense is uh, what we call the phagocytic white blood cells. These include two types of cells called the neutrophils and the macrophages. All right, the macrophages are the white blood cells that I showed you in the blood uh, 
videos that can actually leave your circulation and move into your tissues. And what they do is they find bacteria and viruses and other things that don't belong in your body and they literally digest them. They, they engulf them and take them in and break them down. Now, when this, uh, when you do uh, get infected by a virus or a bacteria, um, the first thing that happens is what we call the inflammatory response, okay? And the four symptoms of the inflammatory response are often considered to be symptoms of, of colds and infections and that sort of thing. Redness, heat, swelling, and pain, okay? Now, what causes these things? Well, um, there's a drug, uh, a, a chemical called a histamine, which is released by cells, come on now, um, that causes the capillaries to dilate, to open up, okay, and become more permeable to the macrophages, the phagocytic white blood cells. The increased blood flow to that area increases the warmth, all right, so it gets red and warm, um, and that can, in and of itself, uh, inhibit some bacteria and viruses. Um, the increased blood flow also brings more white blood cells to that area. Um, and the neutrophils are kind of like the scouts. They find those first invaders and they start to wipe them out. Now, the inflammatory response can be uh, short-lived, um, but if the neutrophils can't take care of that initial invasion and get rid of the uh, original invaders, then uh, more chemicals will call in the macrophages to help digest these, uh, these invaders. Um, and so the increased amount of blood causes redness, causes heat, causes swelling, and the swelling can lead to pain because it stimulates the nearby nerves, all right? And so if you've got, even if you pull a muscle, so it's not even an infection, uh, the same kind of thing will occur, and that's what re leads to the swelling and the pain there. It's all part of this inflammatory response, and that really is the second line of defense. Now, what might that look like? Well, if, uh, if you puncture your skin somehow, and these little green bacteria uh, start to invade, all right, the first thing that's gonna happen is that the injured tissue cells and the mast cells are gonna begin to release histamines, all right, which causes, uh, starts the inflammatory response that causes the capillaries to dilate and increases the blood flow. By the way, if the inflammatory response is triggered by um, an allergen, for example, all right, what do you take in order to get rid of your allergies? An antihistamine, right? That, that's what you take antihistamines for. Now, the second phase of the inflammatory response is uh, that macrophages and dendritic uh, cells will eat the pathogens. And you can see this macrophage here grabbing onto the, um, the, mac the uh, bacteria and destroying it. Uh, and again, that will stimulate the inflammatory response and bring call in even more neutrophils and macrophages and so on. Um, they, uh, they leave the bloodstream and begin to, to uh, literally engulf and digest the invaders. And of course, uh, if capillaries are uh, damaged in this, then blood clotting will begin uh, as well. All right, so all of those steps are parts of the inflammatory response. Okay, so uh, that is the uh, end of the second of three videos on the lymphatic system and the immune response. Uh, in the third video, we'll, we'll talk about specific immunity. All right. I hope you learned something.